Hey guys, Maven here. Recently, the YouTube channel WrestleMania put out their 10 most painful WWE moves to take. Well, oddly enough, I used to be a WWE wrestler. I'm not sure if Mr. Lamia was though. So today we're gonna go through, I'm gonna tell you the moves I agree with, the ones I disagree with, and add a little bit of context, being someone who took these moves firsthand. Let's begin. 10 of the most painful WWE moves to take. Number one, Goldust Shattered Dreams. Oh, 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 oh. Dreams Definitely one Goldust. I did not look it forward to. Him trapping his opponent in the corner of the ring with their legs spread apart, and then Goldust delivers a swift and forceful kick to the groin area. I can tell you, I remember the very first time I had to take the Shattered Dreams. I can remember Goldust or Dustin prepping me during the day exactly what to do, how to take this move. And having a swift strike to this area can cause immense pain. Of course, there's a trick that Goldust uses to alleviate the pain somewhat. Ah, they're gonna talk about it. Contact with the groin, most of the force is in the turnbuckle behind wrestler. You're, in essence, sitting on the turnbuckle. Once Dustin delivers the kick, he actually kicks below the bottom of the turnbuckle. I'm not gonna say you don't feel anything. You do. You feel something, but nothing. And I mean nothing compared to if he was to kick you that hard without hitting the turnbuckle first. More, more than anything, you're feeling the vibration of it. And of course, he's a professional. He knows exactly how to administer a kick to the, to the marbles without separating the marbles east-west. Technically, this is the ultimate trust between two wrestlers, as Goldust has to hit that turnbuckle with precision. Otherwise, it can be a very, very painful night for that wrestler. He's 100% right. This is a move where you have to trust Dustin, and I did. I took it many times. I worked with Dustin several times, even after my WWE career ended. He and I would work on the indies together. Most painful moves to take? Oh no, there were way more painful moves to take than, than, than the Shattered Dreams. Does it look like one of the most painful moves to take? Of course it does, but that just shows you how much of a professional Dustin is, and that shows just how much guys don't want to be kicked in the marbles. Two, the clothesline. The clothesline is a move that every wrestler uses. In fact, it's probably in a beginner's handbook of moves wrestlers need to use. Most people get the clothesline wrong. Here is how it was taught to me, and I'm gonna give big props to Shane McMahon, who actually showed me the proper way to administer a clothesline. A true proper clothesline, it's supposed to be a bump that is taken after the guy giving the clothesline and the guy receiving the clothesline actually connect chest to chest. You're supposed to hit chest, chest, and then the arm as you're following through is technically never even making contact. The arm and the follow through is more of a spectacle. It's more for flair. If done right, the only way a clothesline is painful is if someone does not know how to throw it, is if someone is using their arm and they're actually catching you in the throat. That is, that is not how a clothesline should be administered. And if somebody is giving a clothesline that way, they run the risk of dislocating their elbow, perhaps dislocating their shoulder, obviously hurting the person they're giving it to. Once you get up to the upper echelons and once you're wrestling in the WWE you assume most guys know how to throw a clothesline but that's not necessarily the case the reason Shane was teaching me and other guys the proper way to take the clothesline is because it's one of the easiest moves to botch it's literally one of the things that guys they want to look like they're using the arm to follow through I promise you if you if done right and if the bump is completely crisp that's all you need. It's one of the moves that actually never hurt me. It's one of the moves that if I find myself in a wrestling ring today, I have no problem taking to this day. My bump's not gonna be as crisp, so it's gonna make them look like shit, but hell, I'll still take it. What's even better about the clothesline is that it can come out of nowhere. It's a dynamic move that causes a believable shift at a moment's notice because of the simplicity of the maneuver. So if I was WrestleMania, would I have put the clothesline 
as one of the most painful moves? Absolutely not. Now, that's obviously one of the moves, the earliest moves you learn how to take. And again, you learn how to take a clothesline the day you learn how to take a tackle because that's all it is. And if it is painful, all that means is someone administered it wrong. It should never be painful. It should be one of the easiest bumps in your arsenal and it should be one of the moves you never are worried about taking. Number three, apron brain buster, Sami Zayn. The WWE is always build the apron as the hardest part of the ring, so naturally any move that connects on the edge of the squared circle seems quite brutal. Okay, in full disclosure, I never took this move. I, you know, was long gone by the time Sami Zayn got there. But I have to educate you on just ring construction and how the WWE sets up their ring. Before the canvas is stretched out, that blue canvas that you see on a WWE ring, they make sure that a little bit, probably three quarters of an inch of padding is extended over, over the lip, over the side, hanging down a little bit. So it's not you know, canvas on metal. That's why Sammy, and that's why guys are using the edge and the corner of the ring for a brain buster, for a leg drop like you saw with Taker. I also have seen my fair share of indie rings where they do not have the padding extending that far. In fact, the padding probably extends only to where the ropes come down. If you draw an imaginary vertical line from the three ropes going down to the bottom, that's where the padding will end. So this move probably would be one of the most painful moves ever if done at a show like that. I'm not saying it's not painful. I don't know. I have never, I never took the move, but I do know that Sammy is a professional. I do know that Taker probably wouldn't have done the leg drop he did if it not being for that extra added lip of padding that's on the edge of the ring. That said, I'm not saying that's a cure-all. I'm not saying that alleviates all the pain whatsoever. No, there is still pain attached to it. There aren't many moves that are specific for this part of the ring, which makes Sami Zayn's Brain Buster stand out even more. Sami's very good. Once he gets the guy up as he's going down, and it's very easy to miss it. Before he gets down to the bottom, he cups the guy's head in you know, protecting the guy's head, protecting his neck, and making sure all the force is coming down on the shoulder, you know, the, the shoulder area. Most guys, if you're watching it, you're not gonna see him cup that head in as he's coming down. He's found a great move. He's found a fantastic a move that looks devastating, but he is able to protect the guy the entire time. Now, if done incorrectly, that move could have devastating, devastating consequences, so. To all you young wrestlers out there, be careful. This move, although not fun to take, probably does hurt, but it could hurt a lot worse if you didn't have a professional like Sammy performing and, and protecting you, guiding you, and cupping your head the way he does. Number four, inadverted Alabama slam Drew McIntyre. Of course, obviously, I never took Drew's inadverted Alabama slam. However, I did take Bob Holly's original Alabama slam. And to see and hear all about that finisher, check out the video I did rating and doing my tier list of finisher moves. Going back on the Alabama slam, I, I know Bob wasn't going to over rotate me, meaning I know the first thing that I hit wasn't going to be the crown of my head. I knew that as I came down, my shoulders were going to be the first thing making contact. But this move is a bit more complex than the other moves listed thus far. Oh, that's not the way the to take it. Holly, who finished off his opponents using an Alabama slam that was effective as a signature move. McIntyre's version of Hardcore Holly's there you go. finisher is more dangerous. You're not going to find two better guys at taking moves than Johnny Nitro and Dolph Ziggler. Both guys literally you know, made a career making other guys look like a million bucks. And I, I knew they were going to take it perfectly. Let's see if other guys do. Just ask Riddick Moss who took the ugliest oh, version gosh. of McIntyre's <sighs> <sighs> That right there is exactly why. Oh man, that hurts me right there. There's ways to walk through the move you know, before the show. They have the ability to pull a crash pad out there if they're not 100% sure how to take it. And you know, don't, don't be a tough guy. Don't assume you know how to, you know, a move is gonna be administered. You know, get a crash pad out there 
practice it, you know, go over it 10, 15 times so that doesn't happen. Man, that hurts me watching it. But the inverted Alabama slam requires an extra level of commitment from both parties to prevent a serious injury. When taking a face bump, you never wanna, you never wanna land either on or you never wanna have all the weight coming down on an arm, on a shoulder. You could easily pop your shoulder out, trust me. I have separated this shoulder over 20 times and you never want to come down on a hand. I have broken this elbow doing just that. Came off for, for a splash, landed on it, and broke it. It wasn't anything anyone did but me. So never, obviously, come down on a body part. You want to disperse, you want to spread and disperse as much of that impact over as big of a surface area as possible. But the more complex nature of the inverted Alabama slam makes it more dangerous than most WWE maneuvers. In retrospect, I completely understand why Mr. Lamia added this to the move list. Drew is a professional and Drew is going to, and he's going to be aggressive and he's going to slap people, snap people over. But it's on them. It's on how they take that bump. If they take it properly, dispersing as much of the surface area and dispersing as much of the impact as possible, it's probably not going to hurt as much. If they land on a body part, if they have an arm, something underneath them, you run the risk of, of having a very painful night. So I completely understand why they put that in the most painful moves list. Number five, pop up power bomb to the apron, Kevin Owens. Did you forget about the hardest part of the ring? Apply that to Kevin Owens' signature pop up power bomb that has sadly been relegated to signature move status. But who could forget when Owens turned on Sami Zayn in NXT and destroyed him with the power bomb onto the apron? The minute you're landing on the corner, on the edge, man, there's a lot that can go wrong. And the bumping is all about dispersing as much energy over the greatest amount of area. And that doesn't look like it does it too well. I'm gonna agree with WrestleMania on this one. This move looks devastating. And even though you're, you're traveling a, a smaller distance, yeah, I guarantee you this is one that, that, that definitely hurts. And yeah, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually happy I never, never had to t take this one. Number six, DDT. The DDT is as old as time. There are so many different variations of the DDT, but the classic Jake Roberts maneuver is effective enough to put their opponents on the injury list. That's what happened to Charlie Haas, whose career was never the same after taking McIntyre's Future Shock DDT. I broke my neck. Drew McIntyre broke my neck. It's on YouTube. I know Charlie well. Charlie's one of the best technical wrestlers I've ever been around. I can't believe he allowed Drew to hook him that way. The way Drew hooked him, Charlie did not have control of his own bump going down. He was relying on the person giving the DDT. Never, never do that. Man, just when you're going down, the DDT can look devastating while you still maintain control of your own head going down. It keeps you from getting spiked. Charlie was spiked on that. Though it doesn't have the injury rate of a straight pile driver, it will surely leave your neck sore for the rest of the night. I took one DDT back during my time in HWA, and just like with Charlie Haas, the guy who delivered the DDT, he kept control of my head, and I learned a valuable lesson that night, and that was make sure I'm in control of my own bump. The same way Charlie you know, wasn't in control of his bump, thank God I didn't break my neck, but it can be one of the most painful moves, even though it's one of the, one of the easiest moves that we can do, and it's one of the best moves to have in your arsenal. I do understand you know, why he put it in the most painful moves list. It shouldn't be, but it can be. Number seven, chop. Oh. Can you imagine if Gunther chopped his opponents for an hour straight? All right, chops. <laughs> People, anytime, anytime someone you know, says wrestling, wrestling's fake, you know, let them, let them take a chop. Let them take a chop from a Gunther. Let them take a chop from a Big Show. Big Show chopped me one time and I had his entire handprint on me. Basically, a chop's just a smack and it, ooh, if you take enough of them, it will open up the skin. It will open up. It will actually cut you. It will make you bleed. I a thousand percent understand why he has this on here. Chops are safe enough that the pain won't last very long, but that doesn't mean that your pain experience will be as soft as landing on a cloud of fluffy marshmallows. I remember wrestling Rick. Rick would chop me and you would hear, whoa, and everybody getting excited. And then they would kind of 
be quiet because they knew another one was coming. And if you heard that crisp clap sound, you knew that it was painful. I do understand why he put it on here. I'm in total 100% agreement on him. Chops are one of the most painful moves in the WWE. Number eight, the F5. If there's a reason that Brock Lesnar's F5 has remained his primary finisher, the move looks downright deadly. I'm gonna disagree with him on this. I took I took Brock's very first F5 that he ever delivered, and it's it's a face bump, it's a, it's a front bump from an elevated position. Not too bad, it's not too painful. Um, I mean, there is a spinning element in it, and uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe that makes it look more devastating. It doesn't add to doesn't add to the force, doesn't add to the, the, the impact on the map. You'll see, I hit my nose and my private part <laughs> on the way really hard on both of them. And if you're wondering, <laughs> I just did hit first. <laughs> okay, listen, ro uh, dog, uh, this was, a, this was a, 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 a freak incident. Dog's taken enough enough bumps that he knows if he if he took a hundred of these this was probably the the one out of the hundred where it would hurt like that yeah this was this was a freak accident there's no way that the f5 hurt that much it hurt because his nose and his private part landed that's what hit first like he said his nose landing first <laughs> But no, nah, the F5 is not that, not that bad to take. Number nine, Brett's turnbuckle spot. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be is highly regarded amongst his peers when it comes to protecting his opponents inside the ring. I, I know, and I've heard enough of what Brett, you know, I've, I've heard enough of listening to Brett speak that, you know, he, he hangs his hat on the fact of never, never injuring another a fellow opponent there are plenty of notable tricks bret hart had up his sleeves to grab the fans attention with one of them being his signature bump where he uh, his stone into the turnbuckle. i used to take a version of this but i wouldn't do it chest to the turnbuckle i would do it to the to the back and we called it taking a hard buckle and basically when someone would you know whip you into the buckle and some guys that would work like i know jindrak used to you know whip me or val venus used to whip me and then they would actually fall down to where it looked like they were that's how much force they were throwing you in and you know we would just say as you're whipping somebody hard buckle and i knew instead of hitting i would as soon as i hit the turn buckle i would raise my feet up and then allow you know once i hit that buckle once my feet were off the ground just throw myself forward and take a face bump it looks devastating and then once you land you can get up and you can immediately sell your back and trust me if you do it the right way and with with both guys playing their their part with the guy who's whipping you off falling over and the guy taking the buckle and then you know taking the bump off of it it looks yeah it looks pretty devastating I can't imagine what it would feel like with Brett, you know, doing it, you know, chest and going, hitting his sternum first. That would, I know how much it hurt my back. I can't imagine how much it must have hurt his chest. The spot itself always looked brutal and it's the incredible selling of the hitman that has you buying that his sternum legitimately could have been crushed in this spot. If you can see, if you can watch and actually slow it down, when he cups his arms under, you actually see the ropes go around his around his arm and you can see his, I mean, just exactly, you know, how hard, how much, you know, force he's hitting that turnbuckle with. I mean, that's, yeah, that hurts. Like I can guarantee you that was not a fun move to take. I'm impressed. And it's just, again, show, goes to show the greatness of, of Bret Hart and just how everything he did looked perfect. And number 10, the bonsai drop. The bonsai drop is always a risky move. One of those reasons is when Yokozuna nearly popped a guy's oh. ribcage with a devastating bonsai drop. And that's oh gosh, I've seen that before, and it, life. it literally hurts me every time I see it. You notice when he lands, his feet kind of come out, you know, his because he's barefoot. His heel comes out from under me, slides, and yeah, that guy's chest and neck and throat area, man, that took a hundred percent of what Yoko was dropping down. I, I don't know if if they hurt. Every night Yoko did it, probably didn't, I mean, it probably didn't feel good, you know, having that much, you know, 
you know, and pretty much a Volkswagen landing on you. But Yoko was a Yoko was a guy that I guarantee you he took care. Of. He, you know, ninety nine percent of the time he probably took care of the guys that he as he was landing on them. Now Nia Jax uses this move as a finisher. There have been no injuries reported so far, and hopefully it stays that way. Okay, so Bonsai Drop, 110% agree it belongs on this list of most painful moves. So, what's my overall letter grade for WrestleMania? Well, I give them a solid C plus to a B minus. A lot of the moves they, they had, definitely painful, but some, like the DDT, like the clothesline, if done properly, shouldn't hurt at all. But overall, good job, WrestleMania. Now, those are the most painful moves. Well, what are the most painful finishing moves? To find out, click the video.